Grace Fryer was born on the 14th of March, 1899, in Orange, New Jersey. Her father, Daniel Edward Fryer, worked as a union rep, and her mother was Grace Morton Gilbert. Her family was very large, as she had 10 siblings, yet information on her childhood is scarce, but a newspaper article on her stated that she has not been pampered, nor she has been taught to think first of her own happiness. On the 4th of April 1917, the United States joined the First World War. Two of her brothers were sent off to fight, and in light of this, Grace wanted to help her family and the war effort as much as she could. Just four days later, she managed to find work as a dial painter at the United States Radium Corporation in her hometown in Orange, New Jersey. It was around this time that the US Radium Corporation mass-produced Undark, a high-tech glow-in-the-dark paint invented in 1902 by William J. Hammer. This became widely used among foot soldiers, as they could now read their military dials and wristwatches at night. Furthermore, the paint was also used in a number of household goods, such as light switches, house numbers, and doll eyes. Despite growing health concerns, US Radium stated that their paint was absolutely harmless in such minute quantities. This may have been true for those who bought their products, but the same couldn't be said for the workers who were exposed on end to radium. Unlike other companies at the time, US Radium were more than happy to have women in their workforce. In actual fact, their painting staff was composed almost entirely of teenage girls. Well, their steady hands were perfect for this line of work. Moreover, their wages were around triple that of a standard factory job, meaning these girls were among the highest paid female workers in the country. Because of this, it was described as the elite job for poor working girls. The good pay wasn't the only appealing factor of the job. Many young women worked in the studio alongside their friends and siblings. For a time, Grace worked with her little sister, Adelaide, yet she was very extroverted and since she talked too much, she eventually got sacked. In the studio, they were required to delicately paint undark onto the lines of tiny dials. This work required a lot of precision, so the workers, Grace included, followed the techniques that they had been taught. One of these techniques was called lip pointing. After a few strokes, a paintbrush tended to lose its shape. So women were encouraged to use their lips to keep the tips of a brush sharp and clean. The problem was that every time they put the brush between their lips, they swallowed a tiny amount of flavorless glowing paint. Some young women inquired if the paint could hurt them in any way. Managers replied saying, it wasn't dangerous and that they didn't need to be afraid, assuring them that the only side effect of consuming small amounts of the paint was rosy cheeks. At the time, many people believed that small amounts of radium was actually good for you. It was even marketed as a medical elixir for treating all types of illnesses. For fun, many girls painted their dresses, fingernails and even teeth with the glow-in-the-dark paint, so they could shine at night and stand out from the crowd. The youngsters loved the luminosity that the paint gave off. Eventually, many of the workers even started to glow in the dark. This was a terrible sign, but they had no idea. These poor workers were later known as the Ghost Girls. Despite the scientific community and US Radium knowing the dangers of this substance, they did nothing regarding the misinformation and the conditions that their workers faced in the studio. This was because radium companies sponsored research that suggested the positive effects of small amounts of radium, leading papers to state that it would add years to our lives. While scientists at US Radium did take the necessary precautions when working with the paint, such as using lead screens, tongs, and wearing lead aprons, the girls were completely neglected and left to the effects of radium poisoning. 
After years working at the factory, things seemed pretty normal. But then, in 1922, Molly Magia, one of Grace's colleagues, had to leave her job because she was ill, but she had no idea what was wrong with her. Initially, she had toothache, and then various of her teeth started to fall out. Soon after, she felt agonizing pains, leaving her unable to walk. Despite this, doctors claimed that she had nothing wrong with her. Following this, she lost all her teeth along with her jawbone, which the dentist simply lifted out of her mouth. Molly's body was being destroyed by radium poisoning, and by September 1922, just eight months after her initial toothache, she died. Molly was the first of the dial painters to pass away, but her case wasn't unique. Shortly after her death, Grace, like many other of the dial painters, was suffering from serious bone-related problems, particularly in the jaw. It wasn't long until other dial painters passed away, and in quick succession. These mysterious deaths led to a downturn in business for US Radium. Afraid of this, they created a disinformation campaign and concealed the cause of these mysterious illnesses and deaths. Furthermore, they cooperated with doctors so that the cause of death would be blamed on syphilis. This undermined the women's reputations and allowed US Radium to deny any type of responsibility. Hoping to disprove any link between the dial painting profession and the mysterious illnesses, in 1924, they commissioned the Harvard physiology professor Cecil Drinker to study the working conditions in the factory. Drinker's findings were the exact opposite of what they expected. He confirmed rumored links between radium and the woman's mysterious deaths. The company's president was outraged and again tried to hide these findings. To try and keep US Radium's name untarnished, he then went on to finance new studies which reported no link between the dial painting profession and the mysterious deaths. In 1925, Grace's health problems began to worsen. Her jaw was becoming increasingly weaker. She found herself in more pain and her spine was crushed, leading to her having to wear a steel back brace. Her doctor believed there was a possibility that these serious health issues may have had something to do with her former employment. Grace was a highly intelligent girl, and after seeing what had happened to many of her colleagues, she explored the potential link. She then consulted a specialist named Frederick Flynn to examine her health problems. Despite all the clear signs and what she had been told by her doctor, Flynn stated that her condition had nothing to do with her previous job. Yet, there was good reason for this. Flynn wasn't a specialist. He wasn't even a doctor. He was a toxicologist working for US Radium. That same year, US Radium's first male employee died of unknown causes, just like many of the radium girls. At last, experts finally took charge and investigated just what was going on. The original report from Drinker had been silenced and was limited to the knowledge of the scientific community. Because of this, the radium girls had trouble disproving the widespread belief that small quantities of radium were safe. Then, a doctor called Harrison Martland proved once and for all that these strange illnesses and deaths were indeed caused by radium poisoning. Through testing, he discovered the serious irreversible damage caused by radium when it was inside a person. This was because ingested radium was constantly emitting radiation. This in turn created holes inside the bones, destroying workers from the inside. Martlin soon realized that the poisoning was fatal. The ghost girls who found themselves glowing at night, now knew their death was certain. Grace Fryer then became the driving force behind the lawsuit against US Radium. In spite of the serious health risks now being more well known, all over the states, dial painters were still being employed. Grace believed she didn't have long left, but 
she had a good reason for the lawsuit. She said, It is not for myself I care. I am thinking more of the hundreds of girls to whom this may serve as an example. The problem was that the radium industry was powerful, and they even tried to discredit Martland's clear discovery. Because of this, for two years, many lawyers turned down the case. Despite these setbacks, her persistence and intelligence eventually came to the attention of a young attorney called Raymond Berry, who was willing to take on the case. He filed the suit against US Radium, representing Grace and four other dial painters, demanding $250,000 each in damages. A legal battle ensued. Grace and her colleagues were making national headlines, and soon after, they were in the centre of an international courtroom scandal. The women's health was rapidly going downhill, and the slow-moving court system didn't help. Finally, in January 1928, they made their first court appearance. By now, Grace had lost all her teeth, couldn't walk, and used a back brace to sit up. Yet, reporters still described her as pretty. The other radium girls were in similar conditions, or worse. Well, two were bedbound. The following hearing was in April, but all of the radium girls were too sick to attend. The judge then proceeded to adjourn the case until September, owing to many witnesses being in Europe on vacation. This decision was met with huge backlash, with one newspaper editor saying it was a damnable travesty of justice. This outrage helped the radium girls as the hearing was rescheduled for early June. However, time was running out. US Radium were playing the waiting game and tried to drag out legal proceedings. Furthermore, some of the women had been given just four months to live. Days before the hearing, Berry secured an out-of-court settlement. Desperate, the Radium girls reluctantly accepted. Well, they had little choice and not long left to live. Each woman received $10,000 and had all of their medical and legal expenses paid. Despite the sum being considerably less than they had hoped to obtain, Grace had accomplished her main objective. Just as she had planned, she brought attention to radium poisoning and the exploitation within the radium industry. On the 27th of October 1933, Grace Freyer died in her hometown in New Jersey at the age of 34. Despite the efforts of the New Jersey Radium Girls having ended in what could be seen as a loss, it went on to provoke huge effects on the radium industry and labour rights nationwide. The New Jersey Radium Girls inspired others. One dial painter who read their story in the paper was a woman called Catherine Wolfe Donahue from Illinois. After seeing what had been accomplished, she started her own legal battle in the mid-1930s against the Illinois firm Radium Dial. Just like US Radium, they denied responsibility, lied, and attempted to cover up any link between their employment and radium-related deaths. They even went as far as interfering with autopsies in order to hide the truth. In spite of Catherine looking for justice due to her terrible health problems caused by conditions at Radium Dial, she was shunned pursuing one of the few companies still standing during the Great Depression. In 1938, her case finally went to court, and thanks to her giving evidence from her deathbed, she won the case. This victory wasn't just for herself, but for exploited workers nationwide. Catherine died soon after, on the 27th of July, 1938, at the age of 35. These cases led to life-saving regulations, and finally, companies had to take responsibility for the safety of their employees. Thanks to the courage, determination, and sacrifice of Grace Fryer, Catherine Donahue, and the other Radium Girls, industrial safety standards in the US were significantly tightened, and this definitely saved countless others from a similar fate. To this day, the Ghost Girls are still glowing in their coffins, due to the radium embedded in their bones. 
There have been many books and documentaries written about the Radium Girls, and most recently, there's a film which will be released in the upcoming weeks. Thank you everyone for watching this video on the Radium Girls and Grace Fryer. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a like and a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe? Um, if you've got any suggestions that you'd like me to do, leave me a comment or send me an email, which is found in the description below. And if you haven't checked out my Instagram, I'll leave a link in my description. Thanks.